OK, loads of you have asked for a demo of the new Isis Carve Top Jazz Guitar, so here we are at last. This is the first of six sound settings DI'd into the laptop with a little bit of small room reverb. Obviously, it would sound better through a dedicated guitar setup, but we want you to hear what the guitar sounds like with a dead flat response. More setting demos to come. Basically, this instrument is constructed from all Celtic timbers, something I've wanted to do for many years but never quite managed to achieve until now. So, up top, we have bronze gold machine heads and these have been fitted with hand-carved chocolate oak buttons. The headstock is in Fiddleback Sycamore with a walnut inlaid logo, walnut truss rod plate, uh, which is also inlaid with the Isis skull logo, and it's all finished off with a nice steamed chocolate oak binding. The nut is carved from bone, and moving down, here we have the fabulous Quartersawn chocolate oak fingerboard. Probably the first one in the world. I've never heard of anybody else using it, but I expect there will be others before long, now that the secret is out of the bag. Chocolate oak is made by fuming selected timber in an ammonia-rich atmosphere for a period of time. Then it's hardened by baking, which deepens its colour even further. This process creates a superb timber for fingerboards, with all the striking contrast and brightness of a good dark ebony, coupled with the warmth of touch that you get with rosewood. This is my first chocolate oak fingerboard, and I can truly say, hand on heart, that it's the best fingerboard that I've ever played. I think that says it all. So, the cat's eyes inlays are in pearl, and the fingerboard is bound with sycamore and oak to create a nice contrast between the fingerboard and the neck. Now then, this neck is something special. People who like fast necks often go for ebony fingerboards, but a major drawback is that they combine with the neck timber to act like barometers, changing with the weather. So the truss rod needs tweaking from time to time if a super fast action is going to be maintained. This is also true of rosewood fingerboards, but it's less noticeable if the action is set higher. And I wanted to try a different wood for the neck to see if I could achieve a better balance between the two woods on the neck. And oak and ash seem to be the obvious choice from this point of view to try and reduce the barometer effect. Uh, question was, is European ash actually any good for a neck? Answer, it is superb. This neck is made from selected quarter sawn ash, which is a lovely wood to work with, and we now know, in combination with chocolate oak, makes for a great sustain, speed, and lovely harmonics. So, moving on, the body on this guitar is carved from the same ash tree as the neck, hollowed out to a four millimeter back to give a true acoustic response, but very thin like an electric guitar, and carefully designed to ensure that the instrument retains a great deal of sustain. With an acoustic, the volume is achieved at the expense of sustain. More volume, less sustain. So by making this a quiet acoustic, we get a guitar that is plenty loud enough for writing, practicing, etc., but has a fabulous amount of sustain for what is essentially an acoustic build. Now, most guitarists know that the tonal quality of an acoustic is primarily dependent 
on the choice of wood for the top, plywood being the worst choice in most people's opinion. So here we have a gorgeous piece of bookmatched yew, carved inside and out to achieve a uniform thickness of just 3mm for that lovely live acoustic sound associated with solid tops. The timber was selected for its stability, its wonderfully balanced tone and for the grain pattern which fits the sound hole beautifully. Now, how do we get that fabulous sound faithfully converted into a suitable signal for our sound system? Conventional pickups, magnetics and transducers both fail to reproduce the acoustic sound of a guitar accurately. Modern electroacoustics compensate for this very well by using a transducer coupled with some additional electronic circuitry. However, you have to put up with nasty plastic control panels and horrible batteries inside your guitar to get a decent acoustic sound into your amp. This leads me on to the unusual pickup on this instrument. A development of the surface mounted technology that I pioneered back in the 80s initially for electric guitars. Right, here is a typical magnetic pickup for an electric guitar. And you can see from its considerable depth that to fit this type of pickup, huge holes will need to be gouged out of the body right in the primary sustain part of the instrument. For this reason, I developed a pickup that mounts on the surface of the guitar body. And at the same time, I discovered that a magnetic pickup could be made that would respond to the acoustic harmonics of an instrument, even on a solid body guitar. That discovery led to the development of this pickup, which fits between the strings and the body, so no cavity has to be cut in the guitar at all. Inside here, there is an extension of the neck, so the pickup fits over a solid surface, and the sound box doesn't start until after the pickup. Eliminating the usual feedback problems associated with soundboard magnetic pickups. Now, I know what you're all thinking, that a thin little pickup like this can't possibly be as loud as a standard pickup, but believe me, it is. Inside here are not two, but four coils, a dozen magnets and some other bits and pieces, all fitted into this tiny little space and designed to provide a regular high output low noise sound plus two more special pure acoustic coils that catch all those lovely bright harmonics that a regular magnetic pickup leaves behind <laughs> moving on there is a hand carved oak bridge and a steam bent oak tailpiece polished to highlight the classic medjool arrays of quartered oak. No ugly hinge system for this guitar. And underneath, there is a brass lamination for durability, and more importantly, for an electrical connection to the strings, something that other carved top jazz guitars with wooden tailpieces simply don't have. Now, before I play you out with a bit of demo music, one or two people have expressed concerns. With such a tiny body, Obviously considerably lighter than even a so-called thin-bodied conventional acoustic. And the resultant relatively long neck. Surely this instrument is going to be seriously neck heavy. Well, no. This guitar is absolutely perfectly balanced. Lap and strap. How is that possible? Well, careful design plus inside... The guitar has a handcrafted solid brass tailstock of some considerable weight. So this guitar feels like a dream to hold as well as to play. And don't forget, if you prefer a more acoustic sound, just fit some bronze strings. Thanks for looking. <laughs>